and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to talk about the fundamental difference between the Bible and the Quran. So if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. So I am making this video because I get a lot of comments from Muslims who try and quote Bible verses at me to prove various points about, oh, Christianity is violent, or it treats women badly, or it says that Christians can have multiple wives. And there's a big reason that this doesn't work, which I'm going to explain now. So the thing you need to understand about the Bible is that the Bible is not primarily a rule book. The Bible is a book that's a combination of poetry, songs, history, laws and teaching and instructions but you cannot look at a random verse in the bible and go look the bible says to do x y or z you need to know what it is you're reading in the bible to know is this history is this something that happened in the past that is like a one-time thing that happened or is this something that i'm supposed to read and then take to my own life and do the same thing so the best way that I've heard of to think about this is that the Bible is both descriptive, things that happened, and prescriptive. There are parts of it that we're supposed to apply to our own lives, like the same way when a doctor gives you a medicine prescription, you're supposed to take that and do it. So for example, having multiple wives. Are there people in the Bible who have multiple wives? Yes. There absolutely are. Abraham had concubines. Jacob had two wives. David had multiple, like many, many wives. But do you see anywhere in the Bible that God says, go have multiple wives? I instruct you, have multiple wives. No, there's nowhere in the Bible. Did God put up with it? Yes, but he didn't really like it because Look at the family that God first created, Adam and Eve. That was it. He didn't make extra Eves. He didn't make extra wives for Adam. There was just one. That is the first example that we have of a marriage relationship. And that's the one that God himself specifically designed and put together. But if you look at the history that is laid out in the Bible and all of the numerous times that people in the Bible had multiple wives, I challenge you to find me one example where that worked out well. Pretty much every time somebody in the Bible had more than one wife, it was a flaming disaster. It was awful, which is why today Christians do not have more than one wife because number one, we look at what God first did as an example, as like the best example of marriage. And then we look at the history of what happened in polygamous marriages with more than one wife and we go, Ooh, okay, the thing to be learned there is more than one wife doesn't really work well, so let's not do that. <laughs> Another example is violence that people find in the Bible. I get this quoted at me all the time. All of the references that talk about violence and fighting and killing in the Bible to, to try and prove to me, oh, see, Christianity is violent. But you need to understand that in the Bible, there is violence, but it's a narrative of history. There are certain situations and times and instances where God said, yes, go and fight those people. But normally it's not just God being like, hmm, I don't like those people, wipe them out. It's usually that God has given those people sometimes hundreds of years of opportunity to turn away from sin and evil, to repent of the things that they're doing. For example, there is, there's some nations that are written about in the Bible that were awful. Like think of the worst human atrocities from our recent history and times that by like a hundred. Like there were people who part of their worship system was having sex with animals and part of their rituals, their religious rituals, were sacrificing human babies. They would take these idols, these metal idols, and they would heat up the hands and they would put live infants on these red hot metal hands and like basically sing and dance as these infants are, are being burned alive on these 
red hot iron hands. These are the kind of nations that God spent hundreds of years saying like, stop that, turn away from that, don't do that anymore. Like, I wanna forgive you, I wanna give you mercy, stop doing these horrible things. And it was after these nations just would not that God would say, this nation, like they're done. Like I've given them every chance under the sun and they're done. They have to be wiped out. Otherwise they will teach this, the same atrocious, horrific behavior to, to Israel and to these other nations that I'm trying to redeem and get them to turn away from sin. God's desire is that no one would be lost, that no one would be stuck in sin and, and living this way. But when they would reach a certain point, then yes, God would say, they're out of chances. Like, what else can I do? They're just totally depraved. And there's also examples in the Bible where God would, he would go to a nation and they would turn away. Like, I'm thinking of the book of Jonah, for example. God sends Jonah, one of his prophets, to Nineveh to, to challenge them, like, you're living sinfully, like, you need to repent or I'm going to have to destroy you. And Jonah gets there, gives the shortest sermon in history, it's like one sentence long, and they do, from the king down to like the lowest peasant, the whole city repents and is like, you're right, we've been doing this wrong and we are gonna change. And so God says, okay, then I'm not gonna destroy you. I'm so happy that you are changing, that you're turning back to me. And so God is ready to give mercy and to give chances over and over again, but there is a point at which he has to say like, I can't anymore. Think today, if, if Hitler was on the loose, just like still doing concentration camps, how many chances are enough? If they just will not, at a certain point, you gotta say enough's enough. And that's what God does. And that's why you see instances of violence. But because this is how the Bible works, and I'm not meant to read the Bible and read those passages and go, oh, well, if I don't like that, then I'm just gonna go kill them. Like nowhere in the Bible can I read the, the violence in the Bible and turn around and apply that today because it's history. God was speaking to a specific situation, certain circumstances, and he made a one-time instruction that was done and completed and so it's finished. It doesn't apply to me. I'm reading about it because I want to learn how God thinks, how he wants to relate to his people, but that is not an instruction for me to read and go do. So that is why you'll rarely see Christians or real Christians become radicalized or violent. There's a few people who will claim they're Christians who will maybe carry out a terrorist attack but it is not the norm and they did not get it from the Bible. There is no way that they can read the Bible and interpret, oh, God told me to go do the same thing. It, it's just not how the Bible works. On the flip side, when you look at the Quran and the Hadith from Islam, the Quran is a rule book. I am meant to read the Quran and every verse and instruction there I am meant to turn around and go do. If people quote the Quran to me, then that is meant to be instruction. There's not parts of that that are just meant for me to read and think of as history. Like from everything I've studied about Islam, the Quran and the Hadith are instruction. The Hadith more specifically is like narrative about like Muhammad's life and Muhammad's followers, but the things that they do, Muslims are meant to also go and do because Muhammad Muhammad is supposed to be Allah's main prophet and so his life is meant to be an example to Muslims on how they should also live. His life is meant to be copied. So in that sense, when you put a verse from the Bible and a verse from the Quran, you cannot say that the application and the way to use both verses is the same because I might be reading about history in the Bible, but I'm not supposed to do that. But anything that I read in the Quran and the Hadith, I am supposed to do those things if I am Muslim. I hope that this has been instructive and eye-opening 
and that when you read the Bible, if you're Muslim, if you're Christian, you will keep this in mind that the Bible and the Quran are not meant to be read the same way. If you learned something from watching this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to this channel for more interesting content like this. If you have thoughts or questions about the things that I've talked about, please put those in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Just a caveat, please be kind and respectful and on topic. If your comments are not, then I will delete them or ignore them. I just want this to be a safe place where everyone can engage in peaceful and respectful discussion. So thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye!